Unfortunately, there's a lot of people who've avoided taking a cruise for their vacation. And you know what? Sometimes they're for really silly and quite frankly, unfounded reasons. Today, we're counting down the top five common myths people use to avoid trying a Royal Caribbean cruise and why they're totally wrong. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. If you've never cruised before, here's our list of some of the common reasons I often hear about why they're not taking a cruise and why it's frankly untrue. The first reason people don't take a Royal Caribbean cruise is they think it's expensive. Not only is cruising not more expensive than other vacation options, they typically offer more value for the dollar than any international vacation option out there. Something someone who has never cruised before has to take into account is how much is actually included with your cruise fare. Accommodations, plenty of meals and snacks, entertainment, and transportation between ports is all included. According to the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association, the cruise industry's establishment of over 30 North American embarkation ports provides consumers with unprecedented convenience, cost savings, and value by placing cruise ships within driving distance of 75% of North American vacationers. By providing significant cost savings through the convenience of avoiding air travel, these new home ports have introduced leisure cruising to a wider customer base. Often I see people who price shop a cruise to a land vacation, failing to account for the fact that meals and entertainment they will inevitably have to pay for when going on any land vacation. On top of that, in recent years, Royal Caribbean has offered more options to get guests closer to a true all-inclusive option that has many of the added expenses guests may encounter pre-purchase prior to the cruise. The next reason people avoid taking a Royal Caribbean cruise is they think there's going to be lots of kids. Going on a family cruise line like Royal Caribbean International is sure to find a ship full of kids running around like they're part of Peter Pan's Lost Boys group, right? Of course, they're going to be children on a Royal Caribbean cruise, but the reality is a Royal Caribbean cruise is not dominated by children. According to Cruise Critic, the demographic often seen on Royal Caribbean are families plus couples and singles in their 30s to 50s. The median age is low 40s, but it's slightly lower on shorter cruises and slightly higher on cruises of 10 nights or more. The bottom line is there's a healthy mix, and the idea that a Royal Caribbean cruise is equivalent to a floating Chuck E. Cheese's is just not true. The next untrue myth about why people avoid taking cruises, they think there's not enough for kids to do on board. Now, I know this myth kind of contradicts the previous myth, but of course, usually people aren't looking at both. They give me one or the other one. Regardless, there is plenty for kids to do on a Royal Caribbean cruise. In the last two decades, Royal Caribbean has significantly increased its programming for children and widen the amount of space dedicated to them. Starting with the staff, all the children's activities are supervised by male or female youth staff that must have a four-year university degree or international equivalent in education, recreation, or a related field. All staff also have at least three to five years qualified experience in working with children whose ages will range from six months to 17 years old. Nursery staff must have the same above the qualifications as well as attend a 30 hour nursery training where the curriculum and hands-on experience is in line with the Florida state standards of care. On the ship, kids have a variety of options for them. These include movies for children and teens, supervised and complimentary programming for children ages three to 17 years old, which is better known as Adventure Ocean, Royals Babies and Tots, which is available to children six months to 36 months old, where you can drop off kids at the nursery on select ships. You've got art, science, theater, and story time available in Adventure Ocean, and My Family Time Dining, where parents can have a complete dinner with their kids in the main dining room, then would have the children escorted to Adventure Ocean, leaving the parents to enjoy the evening at their own pace. There's plenty more, like dedicated pool areas, water slides on some ships, kids and teen-only events, and a whole lot more. The next reason people avoid going on a Royal Caribbean ship is they think they're going to be bored. A really common misconception about cruises is they'll run out of things to do and be bored. I think they imagine a cruise ship is a bunch of hotel rooms with a dining room in the middle. Royal Caribbean builds its cruise ships to be floating destinations. The best way to understand what is available to do on a cruise is look at a past cruise compass. The cruise compass is the daily newspaper distributed to all guests that lists everything happening on the ship that day. From pre-dawn to the late night hours, there is always something going on. And of course, these activities are optional to attend. And that means you can do as much or as little as you like. According to the Cruise Line International Association, CLIA, J.D. Power conducted a web-based survey in August of 2016 from its consumer panel targeting consumers who, one, earn more than $50,000 annually, and two, had taken a vacation within the past three years. When these people were asked if cruises are better or worse than a land-based vacation in terms of variety of activities, 77% 
thought cruises were better than land vacations. And when they asked them about having good activities for children, 76% thought cruises were better than land vacations. And when they were asked if they offer something for everybody, 80% thought cruises were better than land vacations. In short, a vast majority of people who try cruising find more to do on a cruise than on a land vacation. So you're definitely not getting bored. And the last reason people avoid taking a Royal Caribbean cruise is they think they're going to get seasick. If there's one thing a lot of first-time cruisers ask a lot of questions about, it's about getting seasick. Going on a Royal Caribbean cruise is nothing like going on your buddy's fishing boat. Royal Caribbean ships are massive vessels equipped with precise GPS and stabilizing technology. Moreover, the captain will regularly plot courses that will take optimal routes for guest comfort. For those extra sensitive to motion, there are certain steps you can take to mitigate the risk of getting seasick, such as over-the-counter medications, some homeopathic treatments as well. The bottom line is, while one could get seasick on a cruise, it's a really low risk. In fact, if you ask veteran cruisers, they will likely tell you their concern over getting seasick is ranked somewhere around the feature film selection shown on board. In other words, it's not a very high concern. So there you go, five reasons that people avoid taking a cruise, which are totally not true at all. So if one of these applied to you, good news, now you're ready to take a cruise because we've totally debunked those and you're ready to go. And of course, I want to hear about your thoughts on why you may be avoiding taking a cruise or still avoiding taking a cruise. Post in the comments. We can help you out there. And I'd love to hear your stories as well. And of course, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel. Really, really helps us out. So until next time, I'm Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.